Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D-Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D-Rich. So this is where blockchain can help. Sending any transaction across the border on Stellar, whether the value is $2, $20, $200, or $2,000, it's fast. Takes less than three to five seconds on average, and it costs fractions of a cent. To give the task force a live real world example of how Stellar creates this equitable access to the global financial system, I'd like to focus on Nigeria. It's the sixth largest remittance market at over 24 billion annually. So Kauri, it's a regulated fintech company in Lagos, Nigeria, provides cross-border payment services for the Nigerian market, and that's powered by Stellar. By tokenizing the Naira and integrating with the Nigerian Interbank Payment Network, Kauri developed payment rails that enable low-cost and instant payments into and out of Nigerian bank accounts. So their product, which is called NGNT, a digital asset that is backed one-to-one fiat Naira, is available on Stellar today for cross-border payments and digital asset exchange. But I was able to hear how it has been used in Nigeria. That's very impressive. I was also able to understand uh, how we could reduce the cost of remittances, which I think is so very important. And don't forget, in my district, that is 46, 47 percent uh, Latin X. We have remittances that are going out every day uh, to many of the uh, Latin countries. And so I'm very, very interested in uh, this uh, cryptocurrency period, blockchain in particular. And uh, again, I thank you, Chairman Lynch. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the D Rich Show. This is D Rich. And today is May 12, 2021. How's it going, guys? Um, this video I found here by uh, Sam Connor, the Stellar Luminot XLM, hashtag XLM at Sam Connor one which was posted immediately after my video that I posted uh, regarding the Stellar Network. So, guys, you heard it. And I just wanted to go ahead and report that to you all so you could hear it for yourself. Stellar Network is going to be huge um, in the making. Nigeria um, digitalization of their uh, their currency, things like that for cross-border remittances. So um, do your due diligence and um, come to your own discernment and decisions when it comes to XLM, Stellar, and um, cross-border payments, um, things like that. And as you know, being uh, part of the XRP family, um, the um, association uh, with one another is kind of close and similar. So, guys, you could kind of figure that these guys are going to be like a, a two-headed monster coming out the gates. Um, this is why you see uh, some of the uh, suppression of the price. And as you know, um, no one's really gone after XLM, okay? Um, as far as like a lawsuit or anything like that to claim that it's a security. Um, so again, um, here we go. We just wanted to leave that to you. So go ahead and give Sam a follow um, there, right there. Um, let's go ahead and like that, okay? And let's go ahead and retweet that there, um, just so that we know that uh, we support uh, Sam on the channel here. So anyway, guys, uh, just want to go ahead and give a shout out to all of the new subscribers. Welcome aboard. And uh, again, thank you guys for coming along on the journey. And those who have been here, uh, Again, I always want to tell you that I appreciate you every single day um, because it's important uh, for me to do so. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get right into that coin market cap. As you can see, Bitcoin's dominance is down to 42.6%. Ethereum is at 19.5 there, uh, getting a half of a percent up on the market. And as we can see, we got a little uh, liquidity coming out of it, dropping down to two percent uh, three uh, trillion of market cap. Bitcoin is at uh, fifty four thousand one hundred and six dollars there, at number one still, guys. So um, 
Ethereum is at four thousand three, and Binance Coin six hundred thirty-seven dollars seventeen cents there, and Dogecoin's taking a breather, guys. He's taking a breather, but no worries. I mean, he's at forty-five cents. I mean, you're getting a little bit over two for a dollar there. So you know, if you guys are into Dogecoin like I am, hey, get. If you took out the top, now you could come back in, and you know get back in there there's no need for me to do so because i think i'm in a good position there um overall down 11 percent over the last 24 hours um but guys it's not going back to some of those levels um of like last week which was with like 30 cents um you know I, I think it might go lower but i don't think it could go too much lower it will go too much lower let me just say it like that cardano right there is at a dollar 70 number six xrp a dollar 39 and this ICP 294, and again, anytime anything is listed on Coinbase, immediately it skyrockets, and soon thereafter it takes a crap. So, um, I guess, I mean, you know, watch out, but eventually uh, it, it might go back up. So, I'm not interested in that. I'm not caring about that coin or whatever because it came out of nowhere. Polkadot is uh, $38, 38, uh, $0.36 cents there at number 9. And rounding out the top 10 there is Bitcoin Cash at $1,421. Trying to get back into the top 10 there is Litecoin, three fifty two thirty, And, uh, you know, it's kind of bleeding right now, guys. So you got to figure out when you want to go in there and, you know, try to get some of that, uh, you know, market. You know, you got... Shiba right here taking a little breather, but overall up 1300% in the last seven days. Not bad there. Um, Polygon Matic is taking a is taking a little stroll. Look at that thing there, up 18.9%. Okay, uh, but anyway, guys, we're going to get into uh, something um, else that was um, upon discovery um, after you know going on these different channels and looking at different stuff so um this is x bullion <clears throat> i do i have to do a little bit more research on it but this is physical code digital and liquid all right and um, gold ecosystem participants are able to access some of the world's largest trading desks for physical lbma and uh, pure gold bullion without paying additional spreads or ongoing custody fees all gold is vaulted insured audited allocated redeemable and direct ownership is instantly transferable there's a video right here you can watch on YouTube so you if you guys are into uh, precious metals gold things like that whether it be digital whether it be um, you know physical form I just want to go ahead and point this out you can own X bullion represents direct ownership of physical gold bullion recorded via serial number while also providing insurance um, as well as audits global liquidity and effortless effortless transferability you can invest in x bullion which is an ideal mechanism to invest securely in physical bullion by managing a best in class insured gold storage solution through a secure blockchain X Bullion is able to provide direct wholesale pricing without charging custody fees and transferring X Bullion is able to be transferred uh, from peer to peer wow, or traded on various exchanges around the world. Token holders have complete freedom around where, when and how their allocated gold bullion is transferred on a network that is available 24-7, 365. Uh, benefits of X Bullion. Um, you can uh, look at this right here. You got X Bullion, physical Bullion, gold ETF, gold tokens, custody value fees zero, um, interest, instant global transfer zero. All right, check. And you can see these. Um, the only one gold tokens right here. Um, allocated and audited. Boom, boom, boom. And it got passes all the checks right there so you go ahead and get started you can look at some of their um, partners there so um, I'll leave this here for you guys to uh, go over 
And then next, guys, I wanted to go back because we covered the uh, debt clock last week. If this thing ever pulls up, so um, I'll go over it. All right, so we, we talked last week about the paper to silver ratio. Um, we talked about the dollar to gold ratio per ounce as well as silver per ounce. But what I wanted to go over, if I didn't point it out, I wanted to point it out here is dollar to crypto ratio right now is 8.89 percent or eight to one uh so um and then back in 2013 uh you had 9200 uh to one so again um your crypto is almost as good as the uh dollar there okay if not better but your your crypto dollars would have been much greater um back in uh 2013 so that's that uh, i just wanted to put that out there for you guys so you guys can uh, kind of trip out on that but anyway guys what i wanted to get into is kind of off the uh course a little bit and um i wanted to talk about this because what we're starting to see is we're starting to see a bunch of stuff pop up like crises um over you know different um, situations here in the United States. Not only that, you're starting to see, uh, you know, potential rumors of war breakout. Let me just be clear: rumors of war breakout. Um, so, you know, um, these things will, you know, ultimately affect the market in one way or the other. At some point, I don't know when. Um, it could be uh, Friday, as far as I know. It could be tomorrow. Who knows? Um, but what we're starting to see is these folks do stuff like this, like, uh, you know, um, during a pandemic, these folks made uh, multi-billions of dollars, okay? And here, um, uh, Jeff Bezos, um, in the last week, has sold over $6.7 billion in Amazon shares. So he's kind of, like, leading you to where you need to kind of get in your mind if you're in the market, um, where things are going, all right? And then, um, not only that, just shortly thereafter, um, we had this news uh, reported. You know, I, don't, I really don't care about these folks because I know what they're about. And we'll, 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 we'll cover them here shortly um, as to what I'm uh, getting at. And um, Bill and Melinda Gates divorced after 27 years. And I believe when Jeff Bezos had got divorced, it was at 25 years. So they like to use those numbers. Um, in, in numerology um, so you got 25 you still got the 7 you got the 2 and the 7 uh, what not after 25 whatever um, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because um, the only way um, that this crook right here gets to offload any of his assets is through divorce okay he wouldn't be able to do it otherwise um, without without the divorce Okay, so let's just don't get fooled by the smoke and mirrors um, because we could go back in history. We could go back in history when the Enron thing um, came out. Okay, Lou Pai, the only guys who ever been lucky enough to get divorced. So if you guys recall Enron, he um, was the CEO and he's one of the lucky few. Enron executive to estate without criminal prosecution. Lou Pai has been referred to as the only guy who's ever been lucky enough to get divorced. Why was Lou Pai so lucky to get divorced? How did his wife's discovery of his many year long affair with strippers and their child of wedlock, out of wedlock turn out to be a good thing for Pai? The answer is timing so perfect it almost seemed planned. Everything is planned, folks. Everything is planned. You think that these folks don't plan behind the scenes that we have nothing to know about? Shortly before Enron went up, went belly up, Luth Pie's wife at the time filed for divorce, and her timing could not have been more perfect, as Enron was falling apart at the seams, and serious questions were being asked about the conduct of the Top Enron executives, Pi was giving the perfect excuse to unload all of his holdings in Enron, claiming that he needed the money to fund his divorce. 
Pi sold the entirety of his shares of Enron ownership. In that move, the SEC questioned as actually a result of insider information, Pi netted himself somewhere around $300 million. Okay, so guys, th this is what's being put out there for you guys right now. You got to go back in the past to prove the future because the future proves past. Okay, we've heard that statement before. We've heard that terminology before. And I want to bring it back up um, because I don't want anyone to get fooled um, that we're upon um, other crises here um, globally, not only in the United States, but here um, around the world. So here's another one that I want you guys to keep an eye on. There's breakup rumors. Is Mark Zuckerberg single again? Um, let's just go back on this. A fan spotted Mark Zuckerberg walking alone, probably coming back from picking up his mail at the end of a several mile long driveway on the afternoon of May 10th, 2021. And was he alone? Definitely yes, says the fan, adding that he was wearing a large sweater and looked really cute, I guess. But my point to all of this is when you see this type of stuff, these type of, um, you know, divorces and things like that of, you know, big time, you know, people, um, you want to keep an eye on why they, why, while they are doing it. Why are they doing it? Excuse me. It is to bypass all of the rules and regulations. That is a loophole, uh, for them to, uh, get out of, of you know paying taxes or you know that they can just sell all of their shares without having you know any sort of penalties okay so when you are looking at the news and you start seeing these type of things pop up and you wonder why um, these are the reasons why um, because they um, are corrupt individuals and they found different loopholes to uh, continue their corruption um, but Without that being said, I want to go back to some executive orders. Um, we've gone over that on this channel before, um, these executive orders before. Um, but I want you to all to know um, where we're headed and what we're going to see um, soon enough um, across, the, across the planet. This is not here just in the United States. It's across the planet. And this is why I always talk to you guys about the greatest wealth transfer in history of the world um, from the people who robbed and pillaged us um, and 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 taken um, away from us while we um, are the you know the the per the persons who you know do all of the work um, you know and and enriching these fools so that they can do whatever they want so anyway um, I want to go back to this executive order 13818 which is um, December 20th 2017 and guys again you might not like this guy here which is cool by me but I like the guy because I like policy and I like things that make sense to me um, so let's go back to this um, executive order okay section one all property and interest in property that are in the United States that hereafter come within the United States or that are hereafter come within the possession or control of any United States person of the following persons are blocked and may not be transferred, paid, or exported, withdrawn, or otherwise dealt in the persons listed in the annex to this order. So this was um, based on uh, these things right here. Degrade the rule of law, perpetuate violent conflicts, facilitate the activities of dangerous persons, and undermine <clears throat> economic markets. The United States seeks to impose tangible and significant consequences on those who commit serious human rights abuse or engage in corruption, as well as to protect the financial systems of the United States from abuse by these same persons. Okay. So I therefore determined that serious human rights abuse 
and corruption around the world constitute around the world keyword around the world constitute an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security foreign policy and economy of the United States and I hereby declare a national emergency to deal with that threat okay um, so any foreign person determined by the Secretary of Treasury in consultation with the Secretary of State or the Attorney General uh, to be responsible for or complicit in or to have directly or indirectly engaged in serious human rights abuse. So we're talking about Bill Gates. Okay. We all know what it is. We don't got to point that stuff out. Corruption, including the misappropriation of state assets, the expropriation of private assets for personal gain, corruption related to government contracts or extraction of natural resources or bribery or the transfer of the felicitation of the transfer of the proceeds of corruption uh, to be have or a leader of official of an entity, including any government entity that is engaged in or whose members have engaged in any of the activities described in subsections uh, 2A, 2B, 1, or 2B, 2 um, of this section relating to the leaders or officials tenure um, and entity whose property and interest in property are blocked pursuant to this order as a result of activities related to the leaders or officials tenure to have attempted to engage in any of the activities described in these subsections and any person determined by the Secretary of the Treasury in consultation with the Secretary of the State and Attorney General to have materially assisted, sponsored, or provided financial material or technological support or goods or services to or in support of any activity described in those subsections. So guys, it's a little bit lengthy here. I don't want to waste too much time on it. Uh, but you know what, those guys um, that I'm mentioning, and the reason why I bring this fool up, Bill Gates, is because he is involved in a whole lot of stuff that we um, are um, about to witness and see. Um, Jeff Bezos as well, okay. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, we know that um, with uh, his donations to, um, we'll keep it at that because I don't want to get too much in, in that when it comes to this because I don't want my channel to kind of take a hit um, but I do have to point this stuff out I'm not going to hide it I'm not going to ignore it um, especially when we starting to see uh, things hit the fan and then I want to go back over to this executive order 13848 imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in the United States elections so these um, things are starting to uh, brood its ugly head as you can see um, there are auditing uh, Maricopa County. Um, there's a um, audit that was uh, wanting to be looked at in New Hampshire, I believe. And then um, there's also one that is going to take place in Michigan soon um, as these um, things are starting to ramp up. But the reason why I wanted to point these things out um, is because these um, executive orders uh, will strip and uh, place uh, holds um, or liens or whatever you want to call it on their assets um, and those assets will be seized and you know once those assets are seized those are the same assets again that have been um, taken uh, from us as human beings as people um, here in society um, so um, those finances are going to come back to us and that that this is part of um you know the greatest wealth transfer um that's going to uh, take place um, those trillions and billions of dollars um, that are seized are going to go back to the people so go ahead and take a read um, i i encourage you to do so um you know again um, this is not about you know your feelings this is not about my feelings um, in regards to who I like as a person, um, because in the beginning of the video, um, I pointed out, uh, you know, I've showed a video. I might not particularly like certain people, um, but I have to report, 
you know, what I see, what people say, um, and how it all relates to, you know, what um, is going on in the world. So we can kind of keep abreast of, uh, of the information um, to uh, use um, our deciphering skills to um, kind of come up with what might be next. So we can prepare, we can plan, um, because, you know, without, um, you know, you know, you know, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. So we're, we're going to we're going to bypass that step because we're always um, planning um, and getting in preparation as we, you know, are alert. We're paying attention and we are aware of what's going on uh, around us so that we can help those um, who um, might not see certain things a certain way. So anyway, guys, I want to leave that at that. And I, again, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, it's kind of different. Um, I know that uh, we didn't talk too much cryptocurrency. Um, but again, um, we just wanted to uh, veer off left just a little bit. Uh, we'll get back on track tomorrow because I know that there's some uh, Ripple news um, regarding a teleconference that is supposed to come up, I think, on the 21st. Um, so I'll discover um, some information on that here later today. Um, and as I prepare for tomorrow's video, we'll get some new and more information out for um, tomorrow's video. So anyway, guys, have a great rest of your uh, Wednesday. Again, happy hump day. We're midweek. Um, it's moving fast. So, you know, um, just, you know, we got to keep the pace. That's all I have to say. We have to keep the pace. We have to continue to um, add to our stacks, add to our bags. And always be appreciative of what you have. And when you get it, you know, take care of it. And if you are taking, you know, profits, again, I always suggest here on the channel that you also take care of that. Do not take profits if you guys are going to go mess around. And, and 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 just squander it off um, this is not about that um, we want to preserve wealth we want to make sure that we um, do that and rather than you know foolishly go spend it now if you want to do um, yourself a treat um, I'm not opposed to that um, but you know at the end of the day the treat um, comes when you are patient long enough to get the rewards that you know that you deserve so anyway, guys, again, hit the like button, the subscribe button, the rumble button, and uh, hit that share and retweet if it's on Twitter that you find me. And um, if you guys uh, find that this video or my information in my videos are important enough to share, um, I greatly appreciate that um, if that's something you don't mind doing. Anyway, um, take care. God bless. And as always, treat everyone with class, dignity, and respect. Bye-bye.